everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. I'm in the kitchen and I'm just about to start a full day of training. But first, I'm gonna make myself a coffee. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that I've recently bought a coffee machine. Uh, I spend way too much money in coffee shops. Why not just learn to do it myself, practice doing it myself at home and make it a little hobby. It has ended up being something I'm like borderline addicted to and I have way too much fun in the morning. So I've used a lot of coffee practicing, uh, trying to get the extraction right, all that kind of stuff. I have probably geeked out on coffee. Like I know so much more about it and how to pull an espresso shot now, it's unreal. For those of you who don't know, it's... That's the first fly I've seen all year. I've got my window open so there's a fly in here. So for those of you who don't know, it's not just put some coffee in a little basket, press a button and go. Like it's really not as easy as that. And I decided to make life difficult for myself by getting one of these. So this is a bottomless port filter, which basically means that in comparison to the standard one that you get, where it's got these little things on the bottom. I'm gonna do it really quickly for you just so you get a brief understanding. Right, so when you put coffee in here, ground coffee, and then you tamp it, if you do this wrong, you'll have little holes through your coffee, which is called channeling, which means that when it comes out of the bottom, it'll spit all over the place and it means the coffee's not extracted properly. This little thing here kind of masks any imperfections with your tamping. I'm trying to explain it as simple as possible. So this creates like a pressure in here that fixes that imperfection and then you don't notice it as much. If you're drinking neat espressos without milk, you'll definitely notice the difference between the bottomless port filters and that one if you've not extracted it properly. I need to get a new basket because this is the standard sage basket. I'm gonna get an IMS one, which basically means the holes are punched through a little bit neater. So when the water comes through the holes, it's a lot better for extraction. Anyway, I've been playing about with that. I've got the standard sage Ooh, entry level Bambino there, not the pro with the milk frother that does it itself because I decided to learn myself. I bought the Bambino on sale. Uh, I also got the grinder next to it. Again, not the pro, just because I wanted to learn to do it all manually. Really enjoy my mornings and I probably get excited now, which is really cute. There's a guy on YouTube called Kev and Kev has helped me along my journey without knowing it. Um, I jumped straight to YouTube as everyone does when they're learning something new. Watched about a million videos on how to make coffee, how to do it at home. I came across James Hoffman and Kev, this guy who's Got Sage Machines, does a lot of reviews on Sage Machines and kind of swayed me towards getting one. And then I invested in his coffee. So, again, this is not sponsored. This is just pure, like, this is what I like. I've also got seaweed crema on my lips because I'm trying to hide spots, so please just bear with me. I've gone for the milk chocolate caramel decaf and the chocolate brownie blend. When I went from supermarket beans to freshly roasted beans, like, wow. That is probably the closest you'll get to a coffee shop. I didn't quite realize how different coffee tastes like if it's bad or if it's good whatever until i started doing it myself so i have subscribed to the monthly subscription of decaf i switched towards the decaf to be fair i prefer the taste of the decaf one that is that i've been excited every morning to try that switch to decaf because i'm borderline addicted to coffee um not the caffeine i think it, i just love the taste of it when i'm dieting if i can't have meals or whatever i tend to just drink so much more coffee and caffeinated coffee won't be ideal. I'm gonna get started there. I will catch you in a moment. I've just done the espresso right now. I've got pseudo caramel all over my face and it's because of my spots. Please ignore my spots. I'm gonna do it with oat milk. Now, oat milk is notoriously difficult to get right. Barista style, which might help the situation. It might not, we'll see. But it's definitely not as easy as whole milk to get right. Here's my milk. My latte art lately has been Terrible, like so bad. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it. But I'm in the process of learning, so this milk's far too bubbly. Oh, the milk's not frothy enough. Right, I'm gonna have to try it with mine in a minute. Ignore that one, she's gonna have it anyway. Nope, no, no. I still can't do it. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. I can only get like one. Close, it's so close. The texture's really nice, but I just. It's so hit and miss, it's very hard to do. I'm gonna keep practicing. Anyway, I'm gonna go and get ready for training and start my day. Every morning, without fail, I write in a little journal. Go through my Taekwondo plan for the week. Make sure I'm clear on what I'm doing every day kind of thing. Obviously it'll change, like, I'm not stupid. Your plans change, everything does a good plan. But that's where this comes in. A little bit of psychology to start the day. 10, 15 minutes, that's literally it. And yeah, I feel like that just kind of Sets the tone for the day, gives me some sort of goals and targets. It also allows me to take off little goals for the day as well. If I come back to this at the end of the day and I've like hit one of the targets, two of the targets, say I've had a really bad day, but I come back here and I'm like, oh my God, I've 
done that today. I actually did that today. It kind of puts me back on track. I'm like, oh, okay, something positive happened today. And I don't know, it just keeps me on the straight. So, right, I'm gonna fill this in and then I've got strength this morning followed by my scalp. Ow. Right, hello. I'm gonna go for a little jog this morning. I have just seen my doctor and my physio. I've got a scan this afternoon on my shin. So I've had a stress response there since. Oh, like October last year. Well, I whacked it in around October last year and then it turned into a stress response in November. And then I had to get through the Grand Prix final because in Taekwondo we have this weird rule that if you pull out within the last two weeks, you get banned from the next Grand Prix. If I'd have pulled out at that time, I'd have been banned from the Manchester Grand Prix this year. So my leg was killing and that's why I only fought with one leg. But we moved, we got through it. So I'm just getting a scan today to see if that's healed or if it's progressing well. And then I can carry on kicking with it. I've been kicking with it for a couple of weeks now and it's absolutely fine. Hopefully the scan shows that I can start doing a bit more heavy contact with it, which is great. Yes, looking good, but I'm just gonna do a run now. I've got a 45 minute run, I think. So I do a 30 to 60 minute run, depending on how busy my day is. I do that every day this week, up until I weigh in. So I'm gonna do that this morning, and then I've got SNC weights straight after that, which takes about an hour, and then I'm heading to my scan. And then I've got kick in at 2.30. I'm gonna go crack on with my session, and I will catch you when I've finished running about. little mornings as well, where it's just me in the gym. I could put my playlist on and chill. Also, I've got an aura ring and I've become obsessed with my sleep. How well I sleep, if I sleep well, how long I sleep for, etc. It was recommended to get one, so I got one. Oh, I don't know if it's a good thing or not because now I'm like obsessed with my sleep. Saturday I got around 12 hours or 13 hours. I was so tired, but I loved it. It brought my readiness score right up, which is so fun. I'll speak about this in another video, but for now, I'm gonna crack on with this. Get this session, or these two sessions out of the way. I'm gonna put my music on as well, because it's only me in the gym. This is great. <laughs> I'm so tired. I look terrible. Right, I'm done. I've got... I've just done an hour's running, steady state, pretty chilled, heart rate around 150. I'm just gonna roll out now and then I've got weights in about 30 minutes.
Hello, what is going on? Okay, I am going to meal prep pretty much all of my meals for the next two weeks. So I plan on making 67s in about four weeks time for the Belgium Open, I think it is. It's either Belgium or Bulgaria. I keep getting them so confused. I've no idea. I've got one comp in two weeks that begins with a B and another comp like two weeks later, which also begins with a B. Um, the first one I'm doing at minus 73 and then the next one I'm doing or aiming to do 67. I am breaking out in such terrible spots at the moment, so just ignore me. But yeah, I have had, for the last couple of weeks, Hello Fresh. So I started ordering them just so I can get a bit more variety back in my meals. I'm no longer with that meal prep company that I was before. I've had to branch out, find something else, and Hello Fresh seemed to suit me. I'm not sponsored, by the way. It's just so much more convenient. Plus, I love cooking, so it fits my lifestyle perfectly. Just pop online go through all the recipes, see which ones I fancy, and then I can cook every night. For the next couple of weeks, I'll be meal prepping my meals so that when I come home from training, if it's late, I don't have to uh, cook, I don't have to do anything, I just take out the freezer and crack on. So this has been very easy for me. I have... The thing I struggle with the most is that like, while I'm cooking and preparing food, I just pick at the food that I'm eating and I've probably eaten like an entire dish before I even sit down to have my meal. So this kind of bypasses all of that and helps me to stay on track. We're bulk cooking today. I am, um, I've got some containers. I'm gonna go with the Honey Harissa squash first. Um, it does have all the nutrition information on the back. If it comes out as big portions, I kind of just split it into four and then add extra veg. So it lowers the calories and obviously you make more portions out of it. So it really depends on how hungry you are as a human, but I'm quite hungry all the time, so. I'm also going to do the Parissa chicken on dual bulgur, jazzy. I meal prepped this one yesterday, but that's for a time when I'm not dieting. There's another chicken one in here somewhere, so I'll be doing that one as well, and then popping them in my freezer. I've also got chicken to meal prep separately, so when I fancy a little bit of a snack, I can just go straight to the chicken, and it's uh, a far healthier option. So, that is that. I'm going to start cooking. Uh, let's go. I'm following the recipe card. So the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything and it just makes it so much easier, I promise. Right, so I'm popping them in the air fryer just to make life a little bit easier rather than the oven. Two meals ready for when I need them. Well, I've just done my first two meals. I'm bending down because it's awkward. Uh, it's butternut squash, something, harissa, tabula, I don't know. I've thrown some chopped almonds over the top with some of the feta. Now, they are gonna cool down for a little bit and then I'll pop them in the freezer, ready for when I need them. And now I'm gonna move on to the next recipe. That took around 20 minutes and I did take my time. Very easy, very simple recipe two delicious looking meals so i'm gonna move on to the next one now which is gonna be a chicken and bulgur wheat i'm gonna make that one now let's get started i've just finished the honey harissa chicken uh, with bulgur wheat which was very simple very easy i'm now gonna move on to the last one that i've got number 44. i'm gonna finish up this recipe card now meal prep that and then figure out what i'm gonna have for dinner it does say around 20 minutes, but I've done this recipe probably three, four, five times already. So I kind of know how to make it, how to do it all. So it should be done in about 10 minutes. Hello, okay, so I look probably tired now. I'm done, I've meal prepped. I've had such a Sunday Sunday, if that makes sense. Uh, wait a second. But to finish off the day, I'm just kind of meal prepping veg. This is what I'm gonna snack on for the next couple of weeks. Broccoli, carrots, all that kind of thing. Some chicken breast, literally just plain chicken breast. And then I've meal prepped into containers. 150 grams of chicken thigh with either butternut squash or carrot. That is my dinner for the rest of the week. I'll say the rest of the week for next week. Very low calorie, high protein, high veggie, that's it. I've taken my carbs out now. If I need carbs, if I've got like a particularly high day, then I'll just grab one of the HelloFresh meals out of the freezer, pop them into the freezer now so they don't obviously go out of date. And yeah, that's it. That chicken has just got one of these sachets, a butter chicken sachet just to cook them in. <clears throat> to add a bit of flavour. Other than this chicken breast, whoa, other than this chicken breast, which was a whole kind of rotisserie chicken, um, that's obviously got nothing on it. But that's just to pick up if I'm feeling particularly snacky. Diet life has officially got quite intense. Um, that's it. I am going to end the day here. Uh, also, look how beautiful these are. I received these on Valentine's Day from a very lovely person, my best friend. <laughs> 
um, which made me very happy. Anyway, that's it. That's my evening done. I have a full day of training tomorrow. A couple of the Spanish team are headed over to the academy, so we're gonna have some good training partners in next week ahead of the next competition. I'm very excited to start the week. I will catch you tomorrow for a full day of training. See you in a bit.